Anna Pulley of Alternet has up a great article about some of the freakiest Bible verses about sex, and it's even weirder than you think. So first, we go to Ezekiel 16.17. It says, quote, You also took the fine jewelry I gave you, the jewelry made of my gold and silver, and you made for yourself male idols and engaged in prostitution with them. Now, Admittedly, that's Bible talk a little bit, so it's not really straightforward and clear-cut. At least to my ear, it wasn't when I first went through it. But then they go on to explain in the article exactly what that means. What they're saying is that women turned gold and silver into dildos, and then they pleasured themselves with it. Why don't they teach that Bible verse? <laughs> You know, all the conservative Christians are always screaming about, oh, the anti-gay passages in, in the Bible are right from God and we got to listen to it. It's not me speaking, it's the Bible. It's God telling us we got to hate the gays. Well, I never hear the conservative Christians go, yeah, sure, I don't want my 17-year-old daughter to have a gold or silver dildo, but the Bible says they should, so by all means, I gave my daughter a dildo for Christmas. I never hear I never hear it. It's in the Bible, man. It's in the Bible. They're saying the girls take the gold silver dildos and they pleasure themselves with it. You're going to disagree with the Bible? Pfft, you're pretty fucking unchristian, man, let me tell you. This is one part of Christianity that I could get behind. Literally get behind. Uh? -huh. Uh? -huh. That was great. Uh so now we move on to Deuteronomy 25 lines 11 through 12 and it says, "Quote if two men, a man and his countrymen, are struggling together, and the wife of one comes near to deliver her husband from the hand of the one who is striking him, and puts out her hand and seizes his genitals, then you shall cut off her hand. You shall not show pity. Okay. Now, again, this is something that's a little bit cloudy because it's in Bible talk, so it requires a little bit of interpretation. But basically what we're looking at here is Jerry Springer drama in the Bible days. And here's one of the ways to interpret it. And they lay this out in the article in Alternate. They say, so two men are fighting, they're fighting over a woman, and the woman walks up and grabs one of their Johnsons. So that's her way of saying, please stop the fighting. I'm trying to change the mood here. I grabbed your dick. Let's have a threesome. That's one of the interpretations. That's one of the interpretations. And the man is supposed to go, all right, how dare you while I'm fighting try to pleasure me. Now I'm going to chop off your hand. Bible. You know, that that's su such a the Bible move. Because the Bible is like, how can we make the least amount of sense? Can, let's tr can we try that angle? Let's do that. Every passage is like, just try to make the least amount of sense and we're, we're all good here. <laughs> all right, now we move to uh, Ezekiel 23, lines 18 to 21. In this one, take note of the vivid descriptions. Quote, When she carried on her whoring so openly and flaunted her nakedness, I turned in disgust from her, as I had turned in disgust from her sister. Yet she increased her whoring, remembering the days of her youth when she played the whore in the land of Egypt and lusted after her lovers there, whose members were like those of donkeys, and, and whose issue was like that of horses. Thus you long for the lewdness of your youth when the Egyptians handled your bosom and press your younger breasts. Oh, oh, dude. What the fuck? This, see, I look at this as just jealous ass rambling in the Bible. Some bitter dude who's getting no buns and is lusting for his ex or some shit is like, fuck that bitch. She was over in Egypt sucking off some dudes with donkey dicks and horse dicks and they were feeling her breasts and oh, I miss her so much. Why doesn't she want to have sex with me anymore? The Bible is kinky as fuck, dude. You want to know why? Because all these motherfuckers are in ancient times in the desert. You know what there is to do in ancient times in the desert? Nothing. You barely stay alive and you fuck. That's your life. And then you die. So that's why a lot of this shit is about sex. Oh, the horse dick. She loves guys with donkey-like dicks, big-ass dicks. I can't compete with that. How am I supposed to compete with the Egyptians and their donkey dicks? This is a holy book to you guys. This is a holy book. 
I've seen more substance in Playboy by far. And at least if you worship Playboy, you get some pictures out of it, right? Those are nice to look at. All right, I'm not done yet. There's Solomon's Song of Songs. This was amazing. I had no idea this existed until today. This is how weird this is. These are some choice uh, sections from this. Your breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. No idea what that means. Your stature is like that of the palm, and your breasts like clusters of fruit. I think this guy likes breasts, he continues. My lover is to me a sachet of myrrh resting between my breasts with the fucking breasts again. I am a wall, and my breasts are like towers. Thus I have become in his eyes like one bringing contentment. <laughs> Here's, we're getting to my favorite parts. Quote, blow on my garden... <laughs> That its fragrance may spread abroad. Let my lover come into his garden and taste its choice fruits. Okay, I know that's crazy Bible talk, but the alternate article points out that's they're talking about cunnilingus. They're talking about eating the box right there. The Bible talks about eating pussy. Wow. Holy! It's the word of God! We must listen to it. Men across America, go down on your woman. And then there's this, the best line by far, quote, My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. You know how they always talk about sodomy being wrong in the Bible? Why does nobody bring up this verse? Where they're talking about anal sex, and they're like, Fuck yeah, bro. I can't wait to get home later and pound my wife in the ass. Apparently the Bible's pro-anal sex, at least in this part. Oh, God. This shows you just how much these idiots don't read the Bible, but they say they believe every word of it. Really, you believe every word of it. Oh, 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 read this part and then go have some fun. That's my advice. And then finally, there's lots fucked up family issues here. First, he tried to sell his daughters into sex saver slavery. Stay classy, buddy. By the way, there's your biblical morals and values. Remember, morals and values in the Bible is how we got to live. All right, sell your daughter into sex slavery. Oh, you don't want to do that, so I guess you're against the Bible. And then, uh, then there's this passage right here. Quote, Our father is old. This is These are Lot's daughters talking. Our father is old, and there is no man around here to give us children. Oh, boy. See where this is going? As is the custom all over the earth, let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. Good googly moogly. The Bible is flat out advocating for daughters to rape their fathers. I rest my case against so-called biblical values.